Okay, I can't walk. Bless. This is a disaster. I feel like I'm in a straight jacket. Okay, so I decided to do something yesterday at Open at Urban Sketchers. And it was to take a book with me and draw in the book. And it's similar to what I did here. I had a book that had big drawings and pictures of fish, and I drew my own fish based on the fish that I saw depicted. Hello, Ms. Darling. And I thought, well, I can do that with another book at Urban Sketchers. I could not find the book I wanted, but I found two others. This was one of them, the Curtain Sketchbook 2 by Wendy Baker. And she evidently is some sort of interior designer of some stripe or plaid, depending on her mood. Uh, and her shtick is to just show you can do all sorts of different things. Well, I thought, well, we're going to be in the Beacon Hill area of Boston, which has all sorts of fancy houses. And I will draw within the window as if the scene were being viewed from the house on Beacon Hill, the townhouse or the carriage house on Beacon Hill. So that was my shtick. Now, I brought with me uh, pens to use in this book uh, with black ink, and I brought a water brush to uh, dissolve the ink to make it match this drawing, the drawing style that was already here. So, for example, this is one that I completed. I showed the view through the flower curtains of a dark, dank alley with mice and rats and fire escapes and stuff. I thought, well, I could see why that person had that kind of drapery. And uh, this idea, I found this church window, uh, which was very angular with these lozenge uh, diamond shaped leaded glass windows. And I had that on the view outside of this window treatment. This very um, art deco, sort of look, asymmetrical look that this curtain had, I, I decided, well, they're going to look across at the house across the street that has the ooh-la-la -la, curly -cue, uh, Art Nouveau balustrade. So anyway, all of the things inside of the curtains I actually saw and actually drew. So I was not cheating by just making things up. Uh, here's another one that had two uh, gas lamps that you see everywhere in um, Beacon Hill. And um, the houses across the sort of courtyard. I was on the flat part of Beacon Hill, which held originally the carriage houses for the wealthy people that lived on the hill itself. So um, my view was less pretty than theirs might have been. So that was one thing I was doing. And uh, if I had to grade myself on how well this worked out, it was maybe a C plus. C plus for trying to be clever. The drawings themselves didn't work all that well. 
Um, I should have tried out a couple of different kinds of pens. Maybe if I used uh, brush markers instead of fountain pens, it would have worked better. And I've got lots of time to go back and try this again sometime. So I might do that. So that was this one. I also brought this book along, which is Architectural Terracotta. And it's a book that has these beautiful full plate renderings of uh, things that this gargoyle company uh, would make or the National Terracotta Society would promote, I guess, and um, how you could make fancy looking things using clay rather than marble. And um, so there was, there's something to it, you know, if it were marble, you wouldn't need these, this steel eye beam in the middle of it, but, or cast iron or whatever it is, eye beam, you'd just be able to make it, carve it directly, it would be strong enough. But anyway, so I, I took this book, brought it with me, turned it upside down, and started drawing. And I learned something, <laughs> again, plan ahead and make sure your pens work. And I had done that, I thought. I you know, tested out the pens on this paper and, and to make sure they'd work. And I chose a sort of terracotta ink. And what I discovered once I started drawing on them if I applied any pressure at all to make a thicker line, the coating on this paper, whatever this paper is made of, has, I don't know what it's made of, but it sort of gets clogged in the pen nib. So if I, if I only wrote very, very lightly, it worked fine. And I started doing drawings that were very, very light like this. But then when I pressed down to get a thicker line, the, the, the paper somehow, the coating on the paper uh, got caught in the tines and uh, I started skipping and getting very, very frustrated. But the drawings I did, uh, again, I was on one, two blocks worth of of Bremer, of Mount Vernon Street from Charles Street to Bremer Street. And I was drawing, um, first drawing I did, I guess, was this one of the two spires on this Church of the Advent. And um, then I, directly in front of me was the um, Charles Street Meeting House, which, um, I was looking up at the bell tower here and the uh, ionic columns that held this thing up and the little weather vane on top. And uh, I, I was liking these two drawings and then I start, then I moved down the street a bit and then I started having problems with this paper. And uh, it was frustrating to me. And, um, but, no one was killed. It was two hours of my life. Um, and it's okay. I'll, now, I'll bring this book out again when I go to other architecturally interesting places and I'll maybe bring a different medium along that will work better with this paper. I'll plan ahead next time. Um, so that was that was what I did. And um, the pens I brought with me to draw in that book were these. And I have subsequently uh, fixed them. <laughs> I brought them out too soon, I guess. And this one 
uh, again, I was having problems with that paper. So um, it's hard to reproduce the anxiety I was having. You know, if there were, if I, if I had the people that study airplane crashes, the NS the National NST and NBT National, whoever they are, those people that go to plane crashes and listen for the, at the black boxes. Well, they would have looked at the drawings I did. They'd discover, well, this kind of line was working and that kind of line wasn't. And then they'd find the, the, the cockpit voice recorder and they would just hear me saying, God damn it. God damn it, God damn it, and worse, um, because I was having a problem with, with this. NSB, National Safety Board, NSTSB, Transportation Safety, TSB, TSB. Anyway, I was just having, yesterday was not a good day. Um, but I did, it was a beautiful day to be outside and it was nice to be outside. And I, um, one of my neighbors was, was um, with the group for the first time with the group and he very much enjoyed it. He's a painter, he does not draw, but he paints with oils. And I think, I think uh, if, Urban sketchers allow watercolorists to do drawings. We should allow painters to do paintings, I guess. So I imagine there might be a, a separate group. See, this is weird paper too. Let's see if I can find a piece of paper that I know these pens work with well. So here's pick paper for pens. And that's what I like to see. This pen railroads, which means it splits a, a bit. But um, I was saying that this this pen is for drawing spermatozoa. So if anyone out there wants to write a book about spermatozoa, I'm your man for illustrating it. Can we say spermatozoa on TV these days? These two pens that I brought with me to draw are very, very fine, slightly flexible, but more inflexible than flexible um, Schaefer pens that uh, were working for a while and then because I pressed down too much, then the paper didn't, they didn't like the paper, as I keep telling you. But on this paper, it does not have that coating. They're fine. So anyway, that was, that was the thing. Um, back to urban sketching. I like urban sketching a lot because I'm, I go to a place that I normally wouldn't draw and I don't have to quote, make art, make quote, art, unquote. I just draw and I get to practice my skills of rendering or trying out something, but I don't feel I have to succeed the way I do when I'm wearing my beret, where I feel, okay, I'm an artist now, so I have to be profound. And that's not to say that there are urban sketchers out there that are profound, or that they shouldn't be, they can be profound. There's nothing wrong with profundity. But um, I, go, I go there to sort of relax and to 
just push a pin around and see what happens. And uh, sometimes that can be funny and sometimes kind of clever, maybe, if I can use that word. But uh, most of the time, it's just fun and relaxing. And I learn things about drawing. I learn things about myself and about Beacon Hill or whatever it is I'm drawing. This is very weird paper. It's just, it's, whatever this kind of paper is, it just sucks the ink right into it. It's just, you. whereas this paper, the, the ink stays on the top, on the surface. So that if I wanted to use a water brush on top of this, using it on here would dissolve the ink and make it sort of gray. Where here it would it would just make the paper wet. The the absorption of the ink has already occurred. There's no there's no ability for it to. Well, let's just test this out. See if this is in fact true. Here, just stop making things up. Why don't you just find out if it's true or not? Do I have a water? Pen, pen on me. I don't want to have to go find one. Pen repairman spit. See? Nothing's happening. Over here, it smears. But over here, it doesn't. So. And this is the paper I was dealing with was the sort of not sm smearing kind. So there we go. That's my, my lesson. Um, I'm going to go back. I do have a couple of people in the audience and I, I wanted this to be less of a discussion with my um, the people that are watching me live as a, just as a uh, thing for urban sketchers. So I'll be back with you guys shortly.